Okay. Uh, good afternoon. I hope you're having a good synergy. Let's kickstart uh, the Citrix networking sessions with a trend that is fast catching up with a lot of organizations, which is called cloud native applications. And we're going to talk about this new shift in the industry and why organizations are moving towards it and where does Citrix ADC play a role in this. I am Komal Bhardwaj, part of the Citrix ADC product management team. And with me, we have uh, Pankaj Gupta, who is senior director from the product marketing team. So here is a brief uh, disclaimer about the timelines of some of the features that we are going to talk about. This is a very futuristic, uh, uh, this is a very uh, niche and a very fast evolving area. So we want to make sure that the timelines are, so the timelines are a little bit fluid here. Yeah. So the agenda is split into four sections. Uh, the first two are where I'll set up the context of what cloud native applications are, what are the reasons organizations are moving, why are the reasons, uh, why are the organizations moving towards cloud native applications, and then uh, what are the challenges that they face when they move from uh, their, from a development envi environment to the production environment. And then in the next two sections, Pankaj is going to talk about how Citrix ADC solves those problems. And this is based on our experience with a lot of customers who have, uh, who have started to take this journey of cloud native applications. So uh, since uh, this is a key part of Citrix networking strategy, we have a bunch of other sessions planned around cloud native. Uh, so, uh, the two to three session is a deep dive of uh, our solutions. This is a basics uh, session. Uh, the 116 session is where one of our customers will be going uh, will be coming and talking uh, how they went cloud native with the help of Citrix solutions. And then there are a bunch of interesting uh, demo booth videos that are available. Uh, we, I encourage you to go uh, in the demo <coughs> area and check out uh, how Citrix ADC is solving cloud native problems. Uh, if you like anything in this session, please do uh, tweet about it. Citrix Energy, Citrix Networking, and Kubernetes are the hashtags. So let's start with understanding what cloud native applications are, why organizations are moving towards it, and what are the challenges that organizations face when they have to move towards cloud native applications. So let's start with an example. Uh, let's say you are building an e-commerce application. Uh, typically, you will build it like a three-tier architecture. So you will have the web layer, the application layer, and then the database layer. And in the application layer, you will do all your magic. You will have your... Uh, all the code, uh, uh, the business logic running in there. For example, you'll have the front end uh, running there, the inventory service, catalog service, shipping service, etc. Okay, and this is how organizations have been building applications. Uh, you would choose a application framework, let's say like Java or Python, Django, and then you will build an application like this. And once you have to deploy this application, you'll choose virtual machines or bare metal servers or on, on cloud, you'll horizontally scale these applications. But each instance will be same, okay? And uh, typically what happens is you have a ADC on front of it, which does essential features like load balancing or TLS offload, or you optimize the L3 to L7 networking policies so that the traffic is going to the right place and it is the most optimized traffic. So this is how world has been this is how monolithic applications have been built till now. And there are a lot of challenges with this approach. So for example, uh, if you make a change to the billing module, then you have to repackage your whole application and develop it across the whole uh, uh, infrastructure. And if you made a mistake or if you introduced a bug in that billing module, then you have to roll back all the builds and then you have to fix a patch uh, so that the, that the effect of that bug is not widespread. The second thing is that you have to be very picky about the uh, infrastructure that you're choosing. So let's say some modules are very image processing heavy, which means they are CPU intensive, and, or, and some applications are uh, database uh, heavy, which, are, which is an IO intensive job. So you have to choose the VM or the bare metal server, which is best of both worlds, okay? which means that you are sometimes going to be using uh, infrastructure which is uh, uh, oversized uh, for a particular application. And then if you have to scale, then you have to forecast what is going to be your demand, and then you have to manually scale the application. So there are, so, so because of these challenges, 
the world has a lot of forward thinking organizations have started moving towards uh, microservices pattern. How many of you are aware about the microservices pattern? Have you deployed microservices? And quick show of hands. Okay. So is microservices an absolutely new term to you? Uh, I'm surprised. Uh, so my, in microservices, what happens is that uh, when we were talking about different modules uh, earlier, each team will build their own application independently. Okay. So for example, the shipping team or the inventory team or the account service team, they will be responsible for building their own application logic as a separate module in the choice of their programming language. So the shipping module could be, let's say, in your uh, Oracle or, or in Java, and the, let's say the front end could be in Node.js, and organizations are free to use different teams and different coding stack, tech stack for in, individual, uh, micro, uh, individual services that they're building. And you connect all of this through an API gateway. And in the API gateway, you, are, you specify the policies so that uh, the communication between these microservices is adhering to certain policies. So for example, uh, the format of the REST API should be following a particular schema. Or uh, let's say the rate limiting policies or the authentication policies should be applied. They, they are present in the API gateway. And once you have to deploy these microservices, you typically containerize these applications and deploy it on a container orchestration platform like Kubernetes. So what happens is uh, each team, as you can see here, will be deploying it according to their sizing needs. So, so let's say the, uh, if you're running a marketing campaign and you expect a lot of traffic to come, uh, so you can scale up the front end and the scaling of the back end or the scaling of the billing payment can may be disproportional to that okay so this in this world the adc plays uh, a different role there are two two levels where you have adcs the first is within the kubernetes cluster the second is outside the kubernetes cluster uh, the adcs inside the kubernetes cluster typically are given to individual teams so that they can apply their own policies apply their own uh, logic for how traffic is going between different microservices. And the ADC that is outside the Kubernetes cluster is given to the traditional IT, net, IT operations or networking team so that you can apply the organization-wide uh, security and networking policies. Or you can do TCP load balancing on that. The advantages of this, the advantages of this type of methodology is that you are doing continuous delivery, which means that if you have to make a change in the billing module, then uh, only that change can go live in the next one or two weeks without impacting all the other microservices. And if you make a mistake in the billing module, then it is easy to roll back that without affecting the other builds. And you can also, you are also free to deploy, as I was saying earlier, you're free to choose your own tech stack and also the uh, infrastructure stack. So for example, your, uh, your uh, data, data modeling module could be residing on a cloud and let's say something which has got to do with more security uh, is on-prem. Okay? So you're free to use different infrastructure for different scaling requirements and, and these things are decoupled in the microservices world. So this is a quick primer of what was the difference between monolith and microservices application. And uh, this is the, at the heart of the revolution that is going on in the industry, where a lot of organizations who want to handle web scale traffic, uh, the, who take inspiration from the likes of Twitter, Netflix, et cetera, they want to develop uh, applications which are uh, handling a lot of web traffic. So, so these are the building blocks for cloud native applications. First is they are modularized, they are working as uh, microservices. The second is that they are containerized and they are deployed on a container orchestration platform like Kubernetes. Uh, and what Kubernetes does is essentially that you tell Kubernetes that this is my desired state. And whenever there is a change from the desired state, the Kubernetes APIs try to converge towards that desired state. So if there is any change, so let's say you have got, uh, you, you're saying that the billing module should, should always have 100 pods, and if there are 99 pods, then it will make sure that the 100 pod comes up on its own, okay? So you are not manually 
monitoring that this particular instance has gone down, now is the time to bring another backup instance up. That is the job of Kubernetes. Okay? And the last is that all of this is done through DevOps. And by DevOps, we mean where developers and operations team are coming together, they are, the, the silos between these teams are removed, and, and all the process from writing the code till the time it hits the production is automated. So you have a very automated CI CD pipeline so that your changes can move to the production and it can reach to the uh, customers quickly. And uh, according to uh, Gartner survey, more than three fourths of, uh, of global organizations have a plan to move towards containerized microservices applications in the next three years. And the basic need is that you have to deliver good solutions, stable solutions, fast to the customers. Uh, how many of you have heard about uh, CNCF, Cloud Native Computing Foundation? Yeah, I see some raise of hands. So, uh, so CNCF is an amazing foundation. It is uh, it's a part of the Linux Foundation where a lot of organizations uh, have come towards building cloud uh, towards contributing projects that help you in building cloud native applications. So Kubernetes is a part of CNCF. Uh, a lot of other uh, solutions like uh, Linkerd or let's say Istio and uh, Prometheus, Grafana, they are a part of uh, CNCF. Uh, what CNCF says is that they will help you in building cloud native applications by building microservices, using containers and automated orchestrators. Okay? But this is all technology. But why do you really need this? So that you can build great products faster. So, so these are the two key tenets, that you have to build stable products and you have to deliver it faster to the market. And this is where we see a lot of our customers also having this desire, having this in their roadmap, that they want to be cloud native, they want to ship out good products, high quality products that automatically scale, and they want to deliver the changes, they want to have a faster time to market. And whenever you're going on any new journey, then there are going to be challenges. And the next section is going to talk about what challenges organizations face when they move to cloud native applications. So these are the different stakeholders in the cloud native ecosystem. So we're going to touch base about what is the key responsibility of each of these stakeholder. And then I'm going to give it to Pankaj, who will tell you about Citrix different solutions that help the needs of individual uh, participants. How many of you can, how many of you are among one of these stakeholders? Uh, are you a Kubernetes admin? Are you a developer? Are you a site reliability engineer or a DevOps or a DevSecOps? I think, is it? Okay, there's a small percentage. I think people are reluctant to raise their hands. Um, okay, so uh, so I'll I'll tell you about the key charter of each of these stakeholders, and then we'll go deep into our solution so that you can relate uh, which solution is useful for which participant. Okay, so for example, you have the admin who is the Kubernetes admin here. He is responsible for figuring out the right Kubernetes distribution and the right infrastructure that his organization needs. Okay? And we are going to have a couple of folks from the industry in the Synergy 116 session who are going to talk about their experience that they are the Kubernetes admin or they are the developers. Uh, what is it that they are looking for uh, from a platform like Citrix? Okay? Then the next is uh, developers. Developers are the guys who actually write the business logic. And uh, they are, uh, if you are, let's say, a cloud-born organization who has, who has started in the last 10 years only. So for them, you know that the way to, to, to write your applications is cloud first. But then there are a lot of organizations which are uh, which has started 50 or 100 years back, and they also want to take the advantages of cloud native applications. So how do you migrate legacy applications from uh, from your traditional, uh, let's say, monolith to microservices without breaking the code right away. Okay. Then you have the site reliability engineers. These are people who are actively looking at the health of your microservices or health of the overall system 
and if there is any issue then they have to report it to the right team and they have to make sure that the system is working fine all the time you have the devsecops who are related who are responsible for uh, making sure that the north south and the east west traffic is secure the north south traffic is the traffic that comes from end customer to the kubernetes cluster east west traffic is the communication between microservices so they have to make sure that all of this traffic is secure and we have the devops whose responsibility as i told earlier is to make sure that the overall solution overall uh, application that you are delivering is going to the end customers faster okay so now that we know about these different stakeholders i would like pankaj to come and talk about the solutions that we are building for all of these stakeholders thank you komal for wonderful insight about uh, microservices <coughs> just to summarize many of the companies are moving towards microservices based application which are also called as cloud native they are built upon containers and kubernetes for primarily three reasons first is that they want agility in their development the biggest biggest benefit of customers who are considering cloud native application or microservices based application that ability to scale the application imagine on a Uh, you are running an e-commerce engine on a Black Friday. You expect a lot of traffic. A lot of traffic means that uh, your one of the module, which could be the credit card processing or the cart which customers use to pick up the merchandise, that has to scale dynamically based on the how many customers are using simultaneously. In monolithic applications, you cannot do that. in the benefit of the microservices based application that if more customers are coming and they are using bigger cards or they are using more credit card transaction those microservices which may be running uh, your cart application cart microservice or credit card processing they can rep- replicate automatically so you really offer a better scale and when the traffic uh, becomes less after the uh, black friday you can still run those instances but at much less number of uh, capacity or much less number of instances so that's a whole driver for microservices based application companies like uh, netflix and others have a huge set of 800 and 900 uh, microservices another big benefit of microservices that you can use these microservices because now your applications are modularized to build new applications pretty quickly so in the whole company you build a one credit card processing engine and that microservice can be used for five different products to offer that service so that's a huge huge driver for microservices based application in today's session we will not be able to cover lot of it but want to glimpse of the breadth and the depth which you have to be aware of that and citrix is kind of a pioneer in this space uh, in a forward moving uh, area of microservices based application so when as a application delivery for microservices based application there are five things you have to consider the application delivery for micro based services application is little bit different from your traditional three tier web applications because you have a additional complexity of microservices how they communicate between them what is the right architecture and when i talk to the customers Uh, they see the five steps which they have to follow and this is a great blueprint for you to consider that when you want to deliver microservices based application through application delivery controller what are the five steps to choosing the right solution for you first and foremost is that picking the right architecture many of the companies are very cloud native experts and some of them are novice so what is the right architecture approach which you have and we are going to look at some of the architectural approach which we offer and pros and cons of that second piece once you figure out that is this is the right ar- architecture for my it organization for the company the next piece which you really look at is that does it work with your tools because you don't want to reinvent the new tools if we are already using adm can i integrate with that or you are embracing and extending the open source what is your preferred choice of the open source tool and can you integrate with them so we're going to talk about some of the choices of open source tools which we have third place is the performance and scale because you are building these applications for performance and scale does your adc solution or application delivery controller solution really have a performance and scale and scale is a very very unique concept here because 
Here, all these instances are running dynamically. They come up and die. So you have to be pretty responsive to run the multiple microservices together each instance. So that's the reason the performance and scale really comes in. So first, you look at, do I have, am I picking the right architecture? Does it integrate with the right uh, tools which I want to use? Third, I look at, does it have the right performance and scale? And the fourth point which you look at that, how do I make these microservices based application secure? And the last piece, which is very dear to every RT, uh, IT organization, how do I troubleshoot things faster? How do I get the analytics? So that's kind of the blueprint which we hear from customers all the time. And this is also the flow. The first you look at architecture, pick the right architecture, pick your tools, look at the right product which has the performance and scale, make sure that you are making the right application and API security choices, and you have the tools to make sure that you troubleshoot things faster and have the actionable insight. Let's look at how Citrix helps you for each one of them. This is the, my most favorite chart, to be honest with you. It shows you that what are the four architectural choices which you have. And they are plotted into two scale. In the bottom, you see the complexity. On the vertical axis, you see the benefit. The first one is two-tier ingress. So basically, you have a one ADC outside the uh, Kubernetes in environment which is taking care of all the ingress, and then you have a one ADC inside your Kubernetes environment. This is the most prominent environment or architecture which we are seeing in the customers. The reason for that, it is the simplest to deploy and easy to deploy, and we'll go into the detail. If you have a DevOps team who are more uh, ADC friendly or they understand technology deep, then the unified in ingress. And most of the deployments, the current uh, for uh, microservices-based architectures are driven by two-tier ingress. Where the market is moving and where the customers are really considering who are especially the cloud native experts moving towards service mesh. And we offer two choices, service mesh light, which is much easier to deploy than the uh, full service mesh, but gives you the very similar benefits of the full service mesh. So you have to pick and choose that which architecture you want to use. You want to start with the simple two-tier ingress, or if you have a very strong strength about understanding of the cloud-native architectures, of microservices, you are embracing already a lot of open source uh, uh, tools and fully un understand service mesh, and you can live with the complexity, but also want a lot of benefits as associated with that, then you choose the service mesh architecture. So that's a very simple way of looking at the four different architecture. And these kind of architectures were not there in the uh, basic uh, three-tier web applications. So when you move into the Kubernetes environment or microservices, you have to pick the right architecture which meets your business technology and your IT organization's uh, uh, technology strength. Let's look at one little bit on more detail. So they are typically called the ingress solutions. The benefit of both of them is easy to deploy. On the left hand side, you see the Citrix ADC on the top, and that actually managed by the networking team. And almost every IT organization has a networking team who is managing ADCs currently, and they continue to manage the ADCs. The newer platform team, who are responsible for all the building the Kubernetes environment, and application developers who wants to uh, propose that how policy should be there for inter-Kubernetes uh, or inter-container uh, environment, that's the second piece which you see the Citrix CPX. So we introduced Citrix CPS, which is the ADC which runs like a container, and it can be managed by the Kubernetes environment, and that actually handles uh, the some of the communication for this for uh, uh, containers here. The use case here, quickest, simpler to production, you still keep the two uh, administrative control. The north part is managed by your existing networking team, and the newer Kubernetes team can manage the uh, Citrix CPX. But if you have a DevOps team who is very 
smart and really understand the ADC technology very well, you can combine both the functions into that. We have not seen many deployments on that, but most of the customers which we see are really, really embracing two-tier ingress because it helps them to deploy applications pretty quickly, also have consistent policy for ingress across uh, traditional applications as well as the new uh, container-based applications. The emerging field is service mesh. The service mesh is basically you have multiple containers, each is running the individual microservices, and you manage and steer the traffic between them more closely. And that is the left-hand part which you see that here Citrix CPX here is putting the policies, traffic steering, security policies between the containers. And each container speaks to another contem container by themselves, and the Citrix CPX and ADC have a visibility of every container. The visibility of containers is so critical because these containers or microservices instances come and go, they can be spin up or spin up down based on the specific uh, uh, traffic load need base basis. The most emerging architecture which is top of the, uh, uh, talk of the town is the service mesh. In service mesh, what you do is that you take the individual pods, which is a collection of containers, and you put a ADC, a mini ADC, which is Citrix CPX as a sidecar. So instead of each container or each pod is speaking to each other, communication is handled by a sidecar. And this week, we announced the Citrix CPX as a sidecar option. So what is the benefit of having the a Citrix CPX as a sidecar. The benefit is that now every communication between any of the microservices is going through the CPX or Citrix ADC. That means you have an unparalleled uh, visibility. Now you can steer the traffic which service can speak to another service. Let's say you have a credit card processing pod. Uh, you do not want that credit card processing microservice to speak to any of the partner's microservices. So you can put a very detailed uh, security policy for that. It also gives you a great uh, analytics engine. Another big thing which you can do with the sidecar option is the retries. Most of the time, let's say one service is trying to talk to another service, and it doesn't get a response in time, so you have to build the redundancy into each of the microservices application. That means you are re replicating this reliability or redundancy into each application for retries. All those things can be offloaded to the sidecar. There's a tons of white paper you will find. We are also going to publish pretty soon more insights into that, but that's the most emerging architecture, and we feel that we are the Shackleton by bringing the new uh, technologies to the market pretty quickly. The choice is yours which one you want to deploy, if you want to start with a very simple one, get your fat wheat uh, wet, you start with the two-tier ingress. But if you think you are, you are already a cloud native expert, you have experimented enough with the cloud native application, microservices, Kubernetes, you are really building a hyperscale environment, you need a very strong security, very deep analytics, the service mesh is the uh, choice for you. The good news, you have a option to select any one of them based on your business need as well as the technology needs. Second uh, step when you consider is that how do I integrate with the tools of my choice? The open source community and the CNCF is really bringing a big set of the open source tools. The tools, tools that comes out to the top is the Prometheus and Grafana. Prometheus brings all the telemetry from uh, multiple sidecars or multiple containers or the pods for that. And what Grafana does, it gives you a great GUI. You can build your beautiful dashboard. And most of the time, customers deploy Prometheus and Grafana. And if this is your choice, that's the way to go for Prometheus and Grafana. And this week, we are announcing the support and integration of Prometheus and Grafana. Another big tool you should also consider is the Spinnaker. When you start deploying the uh, 
Kubernetes-based or microservices-based application, the reason you are doing is you want to increase the velocity of de deployment. You want to move to the continuous deployment, continuous delivery. And from, uh, Spinnaker really allows you to do the canary testing. It allows you to do the automatic uh, uh, canary evaluation. It also allows you to do the pro progressive road rollout. It can steer the traffic from 10% to 100% based on your canary results. So their options are limitless for that. So these are the three tools you should strongly consider if your uh, choice is to using open source tool. Prometheus, Grafana, Spinnaker, and if, if you need more details about uh, tracing, then of course Elasticsearch, Kibana, and uh, Zipkin, so there are many of them. Another uh, key point which you have to also look at that, which cloud platform you are going to deploy your uh, microservices. We support the choice on AWS or Azure or on GCP, but if you are considering to deploy in private cloud, we also support uh, uh, Red Hat uh, OpenShift, and List is just starting. You will hear more and more support for open source tool, more uh, cloud managed platform for Kubernetes, and we are really, really embracing and extending the open source support for so you can really choose the application, you can choose the tools which you really want to use it. Third piece is performance and scale. You are building these applications, microservices based for high performance and high scale. You want to make sure that the product which you are using as a sidecar or a uh, ingress proxy, it is built for microservices. So, Today, our uh, memory footprint is pretty small. It is comparable to any of the, our peers in the market, but it is designed for higher performance. Our testing shows that our products for uh, Kubernetes or for microservices-based environment can give you two to four times uh, uh, faster response. But not just the response, but it's also built for high scale, because in the really, really hyper scale, uh, microservices based applications, you may have uh, tens or uh, hundreds of microservices coming live and then uh, dying down. So you have to react pretty fast for that. And that's a goal which we are uh, achieving with supporting hundreds of containers and high rate of the state change. The high rate of state change and how fast you know the container uh, is been spin up or microservices has uh, microservice instance has been spin up is very very critical for that the next piece is that uh, we talked a lot about microservices uh, uh, open source uh, tools but many of the organizations today have a tier 3 web applications and building the new applications for microservices you would like to have a flexibility and ease of managing both types of application delivery with a single pan of glass. And that's what the Citrix ADM really allows you to manage any ADC on-prem in cloud, whether they are delivering tier three uh, web applications or they are delivering microservices-based application. That's a unique in the in industry, but it gives you a lot of flexibility and uh, benefit of that. We are also trying to make uh, your life much simpler, because as you, I'm sure you realized in the last 30 minutes that microservices are pretty complex. Delivering uh, microservices-based application to your customers is equally complex. But troubleshooting is super, super complex because you have to figure out which microservice is not performing well for delivering the experience. So that's the reason we are building a, uh, now we actually showcase in our booth a service graph based ap approach. So, so we are building service graphs which are also available for micros, which are also available for three tier web applications, also for now microservices based applications. It gives you four things. First is, it gives you the visualization. You can see all different microservices, how they connected with each other. You can gain the insights about each microservice. What is the throughput? What is the saturation? What is the errors? 
But most importantly, you can learn the health score of each one of them. So health score is like you go to a doctor and doctor gives you a health score and health score is a composite in index which is based on your blood pressure, cholesterol, your BMI uh, index, very similar thing which you're trying to do with the health score by looking at all the parameters of microservices and we can tell you that which ones are doing well and which ones are not. The benefit of that is that you can easily identify by looking at a score or color of that microservices that which ones are probable cause or they have a potential to create the trouble for you. And with that, you can detect the anomalies that. If there's a one demo you want to see about uh, uh, microservices, I strongly encourage in our booth to look at the uh, service graphs. And I'm pretty confident you will be amazed the simplicity and how our product team has designed those applications uh, that uh, service graphs to be super, super intuitive for you so you can troubleshoot the things faster. Security is not an afterthought. We bring the richness of uh, our uh, comprehensive application security, which we have used for many, many years. Now we are extending to uh, microservices-based application with same common interface. But what we're also adding now is the API protection because all the microservices speak to each other through APIs and we live in the API economy. So we are now uh, going to offer the API protection so you can rate, rate limit the APIs, you can protect the DDoS list and you will hear more and more in the security sessions. But if you go with Citrix, you will be confident that you can also protect your not just the uh, three-tier web application, but also the microservices-based application. To summarize from my side, so these are the top reasons to consider Citrix for cloud-native application delivery. First is pretty obvious. We give you the four architectural choices, pros and cons, so you can decide which is the right one. Second one is the, uh, the feature consistency. I'm sure many of you don't want to learn something from scratch, so having a common code base across our APIs, uh, ac across our uh, ADCs, gives us the feature velocity, gives you the uh, operational consistency, which is a very, very critical for when you migrate or transition from three-tier web applications to the microservices-based applications. We talked about a small memory, higher performance, built for a scale, integrated security, service graphs, to give you intuitive troubleshooting, canary deployment for continuous delivery, and with ADM, you have a single pan of glass across the multiple clouds, across on-prem, across three-tier web applications, as well as for microservices. And if you've not heard about my, uh, pool licensing capacity, I strongly recommend to attend some of the ADC sessions where you gives you the flexibility to move your licensing capacity between ADC form factor and our CPX included. And the last one is about through service graph and through ADM, we offer value to almost every stakeholder which Komal talked about. So uh, thank you, Pankaj. So this is the, uh, we, are, we are coming back to our five friends who met, whom we met earlier. Uh, and I hope you would have got, got some sense of what we are doing for all of these stakeholders. Just to summarize, uh, for the Kubernetes admin who is looking for a platform that works or, or an infrastructure piece like ADC that works across different uh, Kubernetes distributions, Citrix ADC is available, as Pankaj was saying, it is available on public clouds, on Red Hat OpenShift, and uh, on your bare metal servers also. So we have customers who are using us in different deployment types. Uh, for developers who, who want that any infrastructure piece that they are adding into Kubernetes also behaves like a Kubernetes citizen. So that's why the lightweight CPX, lightweight Citrix ADC will be really helpful. And the other important thing is that since these microservices are talking to each other, so whenever you request, let's say, Amazon.com or any other website, uh, any other cloud-native website, uh, the one end-user request spawns a lot of east-west requests. And if any infrastructure piece 
in that microservices communication is ta itself taking a lot of time, then people will discard it. So, so that's why the lightweight Citrix ADC is going to be really, really helpful. It is going to fit seamlessly into your Kubernetes architecture and be able to provide a lot of operational simplicity, observability metrics, and do uh, the basic functions like uh, load balancing in TLS termination, et cetera. Uh, for the SREs, uh, the site reliability engineers, as Pankaj said, Service Graph, which is our homegrown uh, uh, visualization tool uh, built on top of microservices, will be really helpful. And there are a bunch of open source integrations that we have done with uh, tools like Prometheus, Grafana, uh, Elasticsearch, uh, Fluentd, Logstash, Kibana, Zipkin. Uh, and what these do is that uh, since the as I was saying earlier, since one request is touching a lot of microservices, to trace where is the bottleneck, you have to use a dedicated tool that ties in all these microservices requests and gives you one single pane of glass so that you can figure out where is the bottleneck and remove that bottleneck and do, do, do troubleshooting and diagnosis of your applications. For DevSecOps, uh, since uh, the uh, security, security surface area is now changing, a lot of, uh, because of these microservices, east-west communication. So the security solutions are now shifting left and up. By that I mean uh, they're shifting towards the developer development side rather than towards the person who is actually deploying it. And also the security solutions are shif shifting towards the application layer side, towards the L7 layer side. Okay, So there the API security solutions or the mutual TLS related solutions that uh, we are going to detail in the security solutions will really help the DevSecOps in the cloud native ecosystem. And for the DevOps, uh, we are one of the few uh, solutions that can integrate with, uh, with Spinnaker to send a lot of telemetry information about the networking info, uh, about the networking performance of your microservices so that when you are deploying a new code, you are not just testing its feature correctness, but, but you are also testing whether this code will do any networking related uh, uh, problems in the production environment. Okay? So for that we are integrating with Spinnaker, that, that integration is also available in the demo booths and you can check it out. Uh, so we come back again to the other sessions uh, that uh, we have. Uh, these are the deep dive, SIN 223 is a deep dive session. In 116, uh, we are going to have a customer who is going to talk about the cloud native solution and the journey they took uh, to become cloud native with us. There are a bunch of demo booths. And this session is also going to be repeated on the last day, uh, Thursday. So if you have any colleagues who are interested in cloud native, then uh, you can recommend this session to them. And uh, yeah, before you leave, so we are wrapping up. Before you leave, please uh, give us some feedback about how this session went on the app. And you can also rate this session on the mobile app. And it's time for some questions and tweeting about this session. Please tweet. And if you have any questions, we are here. Uh, you can use the open mic, or we'll be around here for the next five, 10 minutes where you can talk to us. And we do realize there is a lot to cover about uh, cloud native applications and microservices. And we wanted to give you the glimpse of the, what it really need, what, what is really needed, what, service, what microservices based application, what are the challenges and consideration you have to consider when you deploy that. And if you want to have a more architectural or your microservices based application strategy, we are here. Or our salesperson can also help you to get more details about it. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Appreciate it.